Lesson two, fold out panels and page shuffling. Projects with complex folds are formatted in InDesign in one of two ways. During the die lines for varnish plates and complex folds lesson, we learned that complex folds can be designed as one large flat page broken up into folded sections using a die line to communicate where the project needs to fold. Alternatively, projects with fold out panels like end leaves on a book or gate folds on a magazine can be set up using page shuffling in InDesign to physically move pages into place where they will be located in the finished project. InDesign projects need to be formatted as facing pages when creating booklets with fold out panels. If you are designing a three panel brochure that folds with no clear spine location, you can use non-facing pages. But either way, it is important to recognize the distinction between facing pages and non-facing pages. Facing pages sets up your project to display book reader spreads. You will see your project in the order the pages will appear in a finished book, and you will be able to see which pages will be right-hand pages and which will be left-hand pages. Non-facing pages projects are used to format projects that do not require book binding. Reader spreads and printer spreads are not the same. Reader spreads display pages in the order a reader will experience them. Printer spreads, also called impositions, display pages in the order they must be printed before press sheets are folded, assembled into a finished product, and trimmed to size like a book. In this lesson, we will focus on reader spreads. However, it is always important to consider how your design will be produced. So never design a complex fold project without consulting with your printer to make sure your design is functional. A few things you can keep in mind are, ideally, books are always printed in multiples of 16 pages because each press sheet can be printed as 16 pages at a time if you are using standard book sizes. If absolutely necessary, some perfect bound books can be bound in multiples of two pages and saddle stitch books must be bound in a minimum of four pages. Signatures are a large sheet of paper that is folded down to create multiple smaller pages. The example shown is for a 16 page signature. Eight pages print on the front of the press sheet, the other eight pages print on the back. After the press sheet is printed, it will be folded before being bound into a book. Notice how the page numbers do not align with reader spreads. Page four is printing next to page 13. This is an example of a printer spread. It is an imposition that shows how the pages must be laid out for printing. As a designer, you should also know that every sheet of paper has a front and a back, meaning every sheet of paper has two pages. If you add one fold out panel in your design, you will need to add a second page to show where the back of that sheet will land. Fold out panels must be printed separately from the rest of your pages. The best way to see if your design is functional is to create a physical printer spread in position and then fold and assemble it. This is called making a dummy. Look at the bottom example. A 16 page signature prints on the left press sheet. The right press sheet is a four page signature that has a fold out panel on either side. It must be printed separately from traditional 16 page signatures. This is incredibly important to recognize because it affects where fold out panels can be added to a design and what binding methods can be used. The way your project binds can affect the order the pages are printed. Saddle stitching, as illustrated on the left, nests printed signatures. This means that eight pages of each 16 page signature land on the front half of the book and eight pages land on the back half of the book. Perfect binding uses stacked printed signatures. It is easier to see where pages will land in a finished perfect bound book because each signature has 16 pages and they stack. Pages one through 16 are in the first signature, pages 17 through 32 are in the second, and so on and so forth. What is important to know right now is that fold out panels need to land between signatures. In the perfect bound example, we could insert a fold out panel at the front of the book or the back of the book, or between pages 16 and 17, between pages 32 and 33, or between pages 48 and 49. 
Communication is key when designing. You will need to make sure you are communicating effectively with your clients to ensure you are creating something that meets their expectations. And you will need to make sure you're actively working with the person who will be producing your finished design. Sometimes we don't speak the same design language. Never assume everyone uses the same terms that you do. Go above and beyond to double and triple check to make sure your client and your printer and you are all understanding the same specifications. The best way to do this is to draw diagrams, make physical dummies, and to communicate both the flat and finished size of your design. A good example that happens a lot in the printing industry is that someone will ask for a quote to print something like an 8.5 by 11 trifold brochure. Does this mean they want an 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper that's folded in thirds, like a letter fold, or is each of the three panels 8.5 inches wide? If I describe the flat size and the finish size, I can make sure my request is more clear. Saying you want a quote for 8.5 by 11 inch trifold brochures that are 25.5 inches by 11 inches, folding down to 8.5 by 11 is very clear. The flat size of my project is 25.5 inches by 11 inches, and the finish size is 8.5 by 11. You can calculate the flat size of a project by drawing a diagram and summing the distances both horizontally and vertically for the project when flat. If you're designing a book, we refer to the flat and finished size as open and closed. We talk about it in terms of how the book would be when it is open and flat or closed. A book with a finished size of 8.5 by 11 will be described as 17 inches by 11, either flat or open, and eight and a half by 11 inches finished or closed. When it is time to design a magazine or a book that requires fold out panels called gate folds, you will need to first identify where the panels will be located, how many panels need to be added. Remember, we'll add two pages for every panel and we will need to turn page shuffling off in InDesign. Page shuffling, when turned on, allows pages in your InDesign document to automatically reposition if a new page is added. If you were to drag and drop the page into a new location within the document, for example, if you were to drag page six up and drop it into the position of page two, page six will become the new page two and the rest of the pages will shuffle down into place. If you look closely at the example on screen, you can see the color-coded pages have all shuffled down into place when red page six was moved up into the position of page two. Then pages two, three, four, and five shuffled down one position each to become new pages three, four, five, and six. When page shuffling is turned on, it is not possible to attach pages as fold-out panels, so we need to turn page shuffling off. You can turn page shuffling on and off via the Pages panel. Use the Options Flyout menu to check or uncheck the options to allow document pages to shuffle and allow selected spread to shuffle. Uncheck to turn them off. I recommend turning off both options when adding fold-out panels. It is now time to create fold-out panels. This can be a rather complex task, so let's review the steps necessary to properly add fold-out panels. You should write them down and then try to follow along. When we're done, we'll jump over to InDesign and we'll work through another example together. First, always create a physical dummy for your project. We will start simple with a four-page project that will receive additional fold-out panels from on both the front and back cover as illustrated on screen. It is important to know where the spine of your book is, so highlight it everywhere it exists on your folding dummy. Next, number what we're going to call your base pages on your physical dummy. Your base pages will be the regular non-fold-out panel pages. They are the original right and left-hand pages of the book or brochure. The easiest way to identify these pages is to highlight the spine of your book on your brochure first. The base pages will be those that touch the spine. Number these pages in the order you would read them. Skip any fold-out panels when numbering. This is 
an example of a four-page brochure. Page one is the front cover. Pages two and three are the inside spread. And page four is the back cover. I have color-coded my base pages as green and my fold-out panel pages as blue. However, it is important to recognize one continuous sheet of paper will be printed. So I have remade my folding dummy so that it is all made from one continuous sheet of green paper. And you can see that on screen. The original has two blue fold-out panels, but as I recreated it, I matched the folding pattern, the spine indication, and the page numberings using one continuous sheet of paper. Next, create a new InDesign document with facing pages that has the same number of pages that you just labeled. In our case, that will be a four-page document. I have color-coded them dark blue in this example, so dark blue will be our base page color in InDesign. Now we need to figure out how many pages should be added for our fold-out panels. For each panel, we will add two pages. Label each fold-out panel on your physical dummy using letters like A, B, C, and D, so you can see where they are in relationship to the base pages. After you are done, count the number of pages and add these new pages to the end of your InDesign document. Our example has two fold-out panels, so we will need to add four additional pages. I have color-coded them red so you can see a distinction between our dark blue base pages and the new red fold-out panel pages. Turn off page shuffling. Turn both options to allow document pages to shuffle and allow selected spread to shuffle off. You can do this via the options flyout menu on the pages panel. Page numbering works from the top down. So for that reason, it is best to work backwards from the end of your document to the beginning. By working backwards, the numbering on your original pages, in our case, the blue InDesign pages, will not change until after we finish attaching the fold out panels to them. When looking at our physical dummy, we can see there is a fold out panel attached to the left side of page four. Drag and drop a red fold out page until it snaps to the left side of page four as illustrated on screen. Look for the bracket icon to know the page will be attached. At this point, what we were viewing as page four has now become page five. This is why we are working backwards. Pages one, two, and three are still the original pages one, two, and three. Working backwards, the next page we see on our physical dummy is page three. It has a fold-out panel attached to the right side. We can also see there's a page attached to the left side of page two and to the right side of page one. One by one, Add these pages into place via the pages panel in InDesign while making sure their placement matches the folding dummy that you've been working from. Don't forget to always work backwards. Complete page three and then page two and then page one. You have now formatted a four page project that has two fold out panels. One panel folds out off the front page and one folds out off the back page. Take a minute to confirm your InDesign document matches your folding dummy. For our example, you should end up with an eight page InDesign project. Four pages are the original base pages and the other four pages form the two fold out panels.